So in this video, I'm going to upgrade my KitchenAid toaster oven to a PID controller. Uh, I have a still from one of my old videos here because before I started the project, I forgot to take a picture of it when it was still in one piece. So this is the picture you're going to get on the beginning, but we'll get started tearing this thing apart now and getting it upgraded. Here's the pretty simple wiring diagram for this controller. I'm going to have the power coming in through a switch which will turn everything on and off. From there it'll go through a 1 amp fuse into the power feed for the PID. Uh, the 0 volt, the neutral on all this will also tie into there. And then we're going to have straight power coming off of this right into the top side of the solid state relay. When the PID sends control signal out, it's sending a DC signal out. The positive from 4 into the coil, the negative from 5 into the negative on the coil. So when this sends a signal out, this will close this gap, which will send hot power out of number 1 through both sets of heating coils run in series, not parallel, um, and then right back to your 0 volt tie-in. So that will complete the circuit for the power. Turning your heat coils on, everything is controlled through the PID of when it sends power out to those. And then 9 and 10 on the PID are your thermocouple, which will tell it what temperature this is sitting at. So pretty simple diagram. Um, once I get it wired up too, we'll take a look at it again. I've taken it apart, kind of taken the boring stuff out of the video for you, but here's the wiring that was left. And what we're going to do is we're going to be gutting all of this. These just had the little caps on them, you know, temperature sensor. All this is going to go. The only thing we're going to save then is just the wire going out to these coils and the rest of it we're going to rebuild. All we should need in here now is just the, the two hots that are going to feed the coils and the one neutral line coming back up. So I'm just going to extend them wires so we can go up to, into the box up top. Okay, I found some flex connectors that will fit in there pretty good, so we're going to run it just through the front here and that will work great. Well, I was debating how I wanted to run or set this up on here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it angled this way, sitting up like that, so the controls are here. It doesn't have to be in front of the door. But that way this can pop right up into that spot, fit pretty good, be nice and tight out of the way. So I'm probably going to mount that right about there. So i got the holes drilled already. It's got to get them set up on this and drilled into that and bolted together. Almost forgot there's one more wire we need in there. Kind of hard to tell what the temperature is without the thermocouple hooked up. So fortunately this little slot right here it fits right in there and a nut on the inside and should work just fine. Yeah, I better try to feed it through that conduit first. Alright, now we can put the thermocouple in. Alright, now we gotta lay out the box here. I think I'm gonna mount the, the relay right down here. Mark them holes. This is gonna sit in the cover, so that'll probably go up here. The fuse can hang down in there somewhere. And the switch. The switch can go in the cover right there. So I'll have to get those marked out, get the cover cut out, get some holes drilled in the back to mount the relay and have a good ground. So we'll come back when that's done.
All right, all the wiring looks good. So we got power into the switch, which kills everything. Power out to the feed, to the heat coils, and to the fuse. A one amp fuse powers the PID, neutral back to neutral. So this is powered. Thermocouple, red is negative, hooked to nine. Blue is positive for the thermal couple. That's what tells what temperature is inside. It tells this thing what it can turn and turn off. Um, and then this is the DC voltage out, which powers the coil for our solid state relay. So everything looks great. Everything's tightened up. Everything looks good. We're ready to give it a try. It's plugged in. Time to give it a test. Well, let's turn the temp up. Well, it was way overshooting its temperature, so I read the book and the factory differential was set to 80 degrees. So I knocked it down to 5 and it got quite a bit better. Well, it's working. Um, it's not exactly what I was hoping for. I did buy a cheap PID controller off Amazon. So, fortunately I have it set, I think, where it should only be about 3 to 5 degrees below and above and maintain there a little closer to the set point I want. As you can see now, it's 16 degrees under where it's supposed to be and then it turns on and it goes to about 20 or 23 degrees, I think, over. Um, I don't have it insulated real well. That doesn't help at all. And it is a cheap PID. So I will probably pull the cover back off and get some high temp insulation and wrap it around there better. Hopefully that'll make it a little more accurate. But it's working and at least I don't have that dumb 30 minute timer on it anymore. So this will help a lot.